Good morning, this is Cindy. Welcome to my channel. And you may recall several months ago, I made these pinwheels. Hi, Annie. Sorry, my cat is in here pestering. And when you make these pinwheels, and I'll, I'll put the link down below, you see that you take a, a six, it's a six by six piece of cardstock, and you end up cutting out these corners. And I thought to myself at the time, what on earth am I going to do with all of those corners? I've got to figure out something to do with all the corners from my pinwheels. So I have this pinwheel. I have all these corners from all the different pinwheels I have made. So what are we going to do? We, hang on, let me move that out of the way, are going to make page edges. I saw a whole bunch of people doing all sorts of cool things about different page edges and nobody was doing this. And I thought, really? I can do this. I can use, these are one and a half, mostly one and a half inches. All of my pieces are one and a half by one and a half. And it doesn't matter if they're not exactly square. You'll see why in a minute. But then I have a couple that are a little bit smaller and a couple that are a little bit bigger. These are two by twos. These came from, I have a couple of these Park Lane mini paper pads, and they're just these little two by two sheets. Well, there we go. We can make all sorts of things out of, or all sorts of edges. You can also put these on another sheet and make a belly band. Now make a nice belly band. We'll talk more about that in a minute. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. So let's put all that aside. So what I have here now are, I have, I have a strip of paper that is, this one is a little bit over, uh, yeah, it's a little bit over an inch. It's not even an inch and a 16th. It's just a tiny bit over. And then I have a bunch of these and I, you're going to need, oh, I would say between 10 and 12 of them. And I chose a variety of colors. You can choose all the same color. We'll talk about that in a little bit. But the first thing you're going to want to do is find more or less the middle of your sheet here. And I'm just using my, uh, what do you call this thing? My mat to find my middle. And you're going to put a line down it. So you have a scrap sheet of paper, and to be honest with you, I don't know how many of you have all of these leftover strips. I've got, obviously, a bunch of them. So I just took one of my leftover strips, and now I'm going to take my glue stick, and I'm going to line up so that my point, my two points are on the line. I would say it's making a diamond, but I know that a diamond is maybe slightly different shaped. Put a little bit of glue on it, and I am going to actually put this behind it because I want to, I don't want to get glue all over my mat, and I will. I know me. So I'm going to put that behind it. All right, so we've got that. Let me grab my other glue book, the rest of my glue book. And then you're just going to layer them down however you see fit. And when you place the next one, whether you choose to show a little bit of it, whether you choose to show a lot of it, that's why I said 10 to 12 of these, because it really depends upon how much you want to show. I'm planning to put these so that they are about halfway down so that my point, oh, I got glue all over that one. Hang on. Let me bring that down and scoop that glue right back up. Now you're kind of guiding it. You've got to kind of line it up with the, the point above and you use that line. The first time I did this, I did not do a line down here. Oh my glory, I made such a mess. My whole thing kind of curved. I really made a mess of myself the first time. So don't look too closely at the backs of some of those early ones. Okay, 
I'm lining it up. I'm lining up my bottom point. I'm lining my top point here. Again, you can decide how much you want. Do you want a lot? Do you want a little? You know, I can put my point up here. I can change it as I go down. For this particular one, I'm going to keep them all the same. But I'm going to show you some variations in a minute that you can do with this. And as I said, these are one and a half inch um, squares. And they're all leftovers from making my pinwheels. I knew I'd find a use for them sooner or later. Now I'm doing it this way, but once you're done, you can make the decision as to which way, oh, I have a solid pink. I think I'll put the solid pink there. As to which way the arrows go. I'll show you what I mean by arrows in a minute. Let me place this one. Okay, so you see all right now I'm pointing up. When I get all the way done, and I can just pull, peel that right off, I can make my arrows point down. I can make it my own, you know, again, make your decisions. How do you want it to go? Um, I'm trying to avoid being, ooh, I don't think I've had this color on there yet. I don't. I hope you're enjoying yourself. This is, oh, and I'm doing something different with this particular maker Monday which I will talk about in a minute let me finish this up and then I will talk about something that I am doing with I'm just deciding which one I want to go with next I think I want to use this one up does it matter it doesn't really matter these are all over patterns if you have something that has a specific pattern to it you may want to be careful about how you are organizing it but that's totally up to you. And my strip length, by the way, is eight and a half uh, tall. It's only, it's less than a little over an inch this way and eight and a half tall. Now I can stop there or I can add one more. And I think I'm going to go ahead and add one more. I can always take it off later if I decide I don't want it. This is one of the cool things about these projects is, you know, you make your own decisions and everybody's is going to be different from everybody else's. Now you will notice that I have a piece up here that I don't necessarily want. So I'm going to cover, cut that off, throw those away and voila. Now I have an edge. Now I can decorate it at this point. I can put a, something up the middle of it. I, if I've got a long skinny, I, these are extras. I will just save those for another day, another project. Let me just set those off to the side because that's one done. Isn't that easy? Okay, now I did say that I was going to talk about something a little bit different. I am doing something a little different this Maker Monday. I am, uh, the written instructions for these are going to be on my blog. And I will link to that also in the description down below. Actually, you know, before I do this one, I do want to, oh no, I do want to do this one. Hang on. I'm just getting myself all mixed up. Uh, because I'm talking about the, 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 the written instructions. So there were people who were complaining and were not complaining, just mentioning on one of their, one of the discussion groups that I belong to about the fact that they don't really like to watch videos. They would much rather just have the written instructions. Don't talk at them. Don't, don't do anything of that sort. Just let me see the instructions and go from there. And when I mentioned it to my husband, he said, well, that makes sense because he watches 
oh my glory, you cannot believe the number of baking videos and cooking videos that he watches. He is my chef. I don't bake. I don't, I don't make dinner. He does all of that, which is really wonderful. Uh, but he watches them all. And sometimes he says, all I want is the recipe. Stop talking at me. Just give me the recipe. So, and that's really what this is. I'm talking at you, but sometimes you might just want the recipe. You just want the instructions. Don't make me watch you. Don't make me talk, listen to you. Just give me the directions. So to that end, and I will put the link down below. I have written out the directions. I started a while back um, playing with a, a new website for myself. And I had attached a blog as a part of it. So that blog is now available for, and I realized it would be a perfect place to put directions. So I have put in the directions, the written directions for these are on my blog. And if you want to know how to do this that way, all you've got to do is follow that link. It will take you to my blog. Uh, it will take you to actually to the website and to the blog. And you can explore from there. You can explore the website. You can see that I'm doing this one a little bit differently. Hang on, let me pull that down. I believe in getting the very most out of these glue pages that I possibly can. There we go. And that one's done. Some of these are two-sided. Some of them are only single-sided. What's nice about this is it doesn't matter. You do it whatever makes sense to you. bring that up just a little bit and the only reason I'm doing it on another sheet is because I don't want to get glue all over my mat you do it as you see fit now you'll see that this time I have a little bit at the top and a little bit at the bottom that needs to be cut off and that's fine snip snip Snip, snip, done. Now, this one I did a little differently. I put um, the green pieces, the solid pieces in the middle. And I did that on purpose because I thought, what if I wanted to perhaps add in a butterfly? I have all of these different butterflies over here. I'm pretty sure I can find a nice butterfly to go in here. These are all my big butterflies. Let me find my littler butterflies. There we go. Maybe I just want to put a little butterfly on there. And now I can. So now when it goes into a page... I'm not going to add this one because I already have one in here, so I won't add this one to it, but I can put it there. I could also do this as a belly band in the middle, either solo, um, although I do, I, I mentioned that before with the larger one. My concern with this as a belly band is you have a lot of points, a lot of, of uh, and so that might catch up on things that are trying to go through it. I'm looking for a, there we go. You know, trying to slide something through may be a bit of an issue. So what you might want to do is take a, a solid piece. <coughs> sorry. <clears throat> and mount it on the solid piece first. You find a different page that, that's going to show up on a little bit better. There we go. So if you mount it on that page first... I would do a wide piece that you could then slide things in and out of. Okay. That might make it a little bit easier. Okay. So that's how to make 
a belly band. I did want to show you one more piece about this, and I'm not going to make this piece. I just kind of started it a little bit. Um, these are one half inch. <clears throat> sorry. These are one inch squares. These are one and a half inch, and those are two inch squares. Let me grab a piece of paper. I can see that better on. Those are not down so I'm being a little bit more careful there so you can see with a wider one with the one and a half and then these are just one inch that I haven't yet started to put down yet because I, I haven't I don't know what I want to do with that one yet but it's the same basic principle so it doesn't matter take a strip put a line down the middle of it and then attach your pieces Easy peasy. If you would like the written directions for this, use the link below. If you want to see how the pinwheels are made, uh, I will also leave that link down below. If you are enjoying these videos, please make sure you hit the subscribe button and hit like to let YouTube know that you like them. In the meantime, this is Cindy signing off.